Rough week for Atlanta United, but did Philly's coach just motivate Kainsay with some petty name calling? We're getting to all that and more coming up. Welcome to the show, Five Sharp Fam. I'm AJ, and this is Mark. Before we get into it, become part of the notification squad by hitting the bell next to the subscribe button on YouTube. This segment is sponsored by Thinking Man Tavern, a cozy Decatur neighborhood pub. Grab a tasty beverage from a wide variety of selections and a plate of something delicious from the menu. To go, check out Thinking Man Tavern. So Atlanta United lost its first match of the season in MLS 2-1 to New England Revolution on Saturday. And uh, yeah, heavily rotated side. Some would say they looked like that as well because a lot of them are lacking a lot of match sharpness. Kubo Torres started up top and Anton Wax and Alan Franco were the center back pairing. Third different center back pairing in as many games. But uh, yeah, it's definitely, yeah, I would say we looked very disjointed. We looked like uh, a team that is still very much trying to figure out a lot of things in the final third. Uh, very just lacking that cutting edge. But, uh, you know, anytime you do, of course, when you start Kubo Torres, uh, yeah, there's a drop off, unfortunately. It's, uh, you know, he taking that kind of academy role on our, uh, you know, kind of teaching our young uh, guys, I mean, yeah, he's more of probably that type of level now, I think. he's. If you start him, you, you're missing some things, uh, especially in the finishing department. But, uh, yeah, hold up. It's fine from him. It's just he's got the yips in front of goal, do you think? Yeah, I think the lineup in general didn't inspire a whole lot of confidence, uh, to be honest. So, you know, when you, when lineup came out, it was like, okay, well, New England's a tough matchup anyway, so you're just kind of hoping for a draw. Um, I guess uh, in terms of the scoreline, they almost achieved it. I mean, you know, they were tied 1-1 at halftime, and uh, they never were down by more than one goal. But um, in terms of how the match played out, you know, it's, I think it's as much as you would expect when you see, when you compare the two lineups. Um, New England just dominated, you know, uh, I think from the, especially from like the 15th minute on, um, there was one way traffic pretty much the crosses, you know, it seemed like all of them were dangerous or in the case of the first goal, finding ahead. Um, and, um, the penalty call for New England, I didn't quite see how there is enough to turn overturn that, but mm -hmm. I guess it is what it is. I think they deserve the results. Even if uh, that decision, again, I thought it was a little strange. So, um, yeah, not a lot of bright spots for Bentley United in this match. Definitely not. And uh, early on with injury issues as well, with uh, pretty much the 19th minutes that Jurgen Dom had to come off, I believe, uh, somewhere in that territory. Uh, or 25th minute, rather. But still, uh, yeah, we started off looking more like it was going to be like uh, that 3-4-3 uh, that he was trying, but uh, yeah, you know, Jurgen Dom comes off, uh, Bello has to come on, so Jake Mulraney moves over to that right side, and uh, yeah, it's just uh, a little dire from there, and uh, also, you know, so, you know, we're level at the half, and we're definitely a bit fortunate and, uh, you know, Moreno does put away that goal well. Uh, you know, he probably needs to arguably score more from the run of play, uh, especially being a former DP. But, you know, it is what it is there. I think, uh, you know, two of his three goals have been from uh, penalties. Yeah, we need we need more from, uh, you know, from Moreno here. But uh at halftime, we make substitutes and uh, or substitutions rather, and Ezekiel Barco does come on, and so does Miles Robinson, who, well, uh, <laughs> very uh, hilariously named as uh, Johnny Bravo, but uh, <laughs> kind of just like, what's going on here? Uh, did the uh, you know the I guess graphics team just accidentally leave on the name, whatever it is. Miles Robinson needs to be called Johnny Bravo now because uh, that just <laughs> it doesn't quite work in terms of what he looks like or whatever. But hey, you know it uh, it's a hilarious gaff and I think uh, it needs to continue. But um, 
but yes, Ezekiel Barco, he comes on. Uh, we look just about as lost, though, I think. It's not not much uh, is really, I think, uh, helped here. And uh, yeah, you know, essentially, New England Revolution, they just kind of play us off the park a bit, and it's real annoying. But then at Barco, the substitute, he's forced off after essentially about 20 minutes. Uh, and we have to go down to 10 men. Very, very tough. Uh, and commendable for the team that uh, we didn't concede more. I mean, yeah, they uh, they were given maybe a, a soft penalty, one would say, uh, in their respect, too. Uh, you know, was it on the line? Uh, it's tough. Tough to call. And I, I can't see how it, was, it could have been determined as over the line, but... We uh we're not getting a lot of breaks here, and so that's why when Moreno gets that uh that call in the box, you know we'll take him wherever we can get him. Uh, we're not scoring from the run of play, absolutely. Let's you know let's get as many of these type of calls until we can get firing from the run of play on a regular basis. But um yeah, it's a uh, it's kind of a dire match, so we're not gonna dwell too hard on it. Uh, but. Uh, definitely Sosa was a high point here with 81 touches, season high. Uh, Moreno did have a team high four shots, but uh, yeah, you know, not many on target there, and it is what it is. But uh, I think, you know, it shows that when we rotate and when we decide to rotate, uh, there's levels of drop off that uh, it's very apparent we, we just do not have a deep enough team at the moment to uh to compete in as many competitions as we uh we want so yeah any uh any final thoughts on this match mark yeah um i'm happy for moreno for getting school and earning penalty you know it came from a bit of direct play uh so i'd like to see more of that from him and the rest of the team um sosa good as advertised you know did what he could probably a big reason why we didn't allow more goals um but other than that yeah like, as you said pretty dire match yeah, so uh, let's quickly move on then to the Philadelphia Union match in the CCL where Joseph Martinez gave a little bit of motivation before uh, on social media to really, I think, I think maybe rev up more of the fans than really the players because, uh, well, he first said uh, never give up on social media, which, yeah, you know, uh, a lot of fans maybe... Uh, got some hope from that, but yeah, that first pretty much 45 minutes, no urgency, pretty much uh, lacking uh, any sort of impetus to really try to cut Philly open. And Philly, way more direct and way more urgent than we were, and we looked susceptible every single time that they were uh, attacking us, pretty much. And uh, we were arguably very, very lucky to not have conceded uh, they essentially flipped that script from that first match uh, when we weren't very clinical and we were fashioning a lot of chances. But uh, yeah, they weren't clinical. They fashioned a lot of chances. It's ah man, um, you know something something happened over the weekend or after that uh, that second half against the the Union in the first leg, where uh, you know we were pretty much trying to chase, trying to score a goal at home and. Uh, uh, it's arguable that that was, uh, the right thing to do from Hainsey to push the team forward like that. Uh, cause obviously a three nil away, uh, three, uh, three away goals rather is really a pretty insurmountable kind of, uh, thing that has only happened in terms of, uh, overturning it about four times, I think in CCL apparently. And so it's. Not uh, not that common, and especially it's a common scoreline for us in the first leg that uh, kind of sees a familiar uh, occurrence in us being knocked out uh, of the round of eight, the quarterfinals, again. And, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, quick thoughts on, uh, on this one, Mark? Yeah, uh, I was surprised at the pace of the match a little bit. I thought Phil... We might try to, um, you know, kill the game, uh, but it was a bit up and down. But, you know, at the same time, yeah, Philly did have their chances. Again, Sosa immense, all the blocks he made and so on. And then to score, I mean, 
that's a striker's goal. You know, that's a that's an attacker's goal. The turn, the touch to get the ball out of his feet. It's three touches in total, and uh, every one of them are just um, you know maximum value. So um, yeah, can't say enough about Sosa so far this season. But um, not and going forward, obviously, you know, Lena has some questions that need to be answered. Um, particularly as Joseph, you know, I think we can all understand he's working his way back. But in any case, even with a healthy Joseph, it can be him, you know. So um, one of the other uh, attacking midfielders, I think, uh, need to start putting in consistent performances and uh, make bold decisions um, so that uh, Aline and it can get, uh, you know, on a run of results and really uh see the results i think you you gain confidence in what you're doing from the results you know so Mm -hmm. i think they need to see um that tangible reward for the efforts that they're putting in yeah because uh i mean while we do look pretty toothless in the the final third uh yeah there's arguably some build-up that's looking pretty decent uh and with sosa you know let's just (laughs) Let's just wax poetic just even more just slightly about, uh, you know, his defensive work as well in the box. You know, at one point, uh, a double block with his head and with his feet right after pretty much uh, starting attacks from the back as well. Uh, And then, yeah, like the goal you were saying, it's just, uh, you know, beautiful turn. And then, you know, a Thierry Henry-esque finish. It's just beautiful. I mean, I always love a bottom right corner goal for sure but uh yeah it's uh yeah we just look um just something really i think lacking in that final third and joseph martinez also yeah struggles a little bit uh to get some service i mean he has to pretty much uh drop pretty deep to at least get some touches and it's just uh you know whether you know, I'm not really sure that it has anything to do with, uh, you know, his uh, coming back from injury. I think it's really, it's just a really, really, uh, you know, poor showing from, um, you know, attack wise from a lot of our players to be able to find him. And uh, it's fair, yes. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to find him when the, you know, middle is so compact and so congested. Uh, and so us having to try to find the space from the wings, yeah, you kind of see a lot of uh, service that's just a little too predictable. A lot of balls that are in the air, a lot of um, you know things that uh, kind of play right into their hands. They have really large uh, center backs. They have guys that, um, yeah, just you know when it's so compact so tough to get through like the the lofted balls joseph martinez is not going to win most of them even though he's got a really really great jumping ability but uh yeah it's one of those uh yeah getting back to the score line where uh in stoppage time you know sosa does get that goal it gave us that glimmer of hope it's three one you know just two more could we could we uh you know we're chasing that second half pretty much uh trying to make it happen and it gets to pretty much the 88th minute where the dagger does happen from philly and uh you know it's a uh it's a set piece there and uh we essentially uh yeah get countered and it's essentially what philly have done well the entire leg is uh find those spaces and yeah you think you know, Robinson might do better here in terms of uh, on the goal. Uh, yeah, the ball goes out wide. He tries to tackle and misses the tackle. And so the player does uh, able, he is able to get all the way to the byline and put in a ball that skips past three players and ends up on who else but Casper Zerbelko's feet. And he puts away the dagger. And uh, there go our hopes of advancing for sure. Even, yeah, I mean, it was already dead at that point anyway. 88th minute. We were still chasing. It's just, uh, yeah, we're anemic in front of goal right now. And, um, you know, is there there anything else you can add to that? I mean, it's just, 
it's tough to uh, you know to see how and where the goals are coming from at the moment. Yeah, it is. Um, and you think of some of the players that are, are have played a lot this season, like Hyman, like Dom, like Mulaney. Um, I think if you were to pull the fan base, I don't think you'd get a consensus, you know, positive about any of those players. And it's not to say that they're bad, but you know, they just need to. We need to see what they can do consistently. Like we see, I feel like we see flash. Um, and then you know, when Barco comes back healthy, you know, we'll need him to be consistent. Uh, we we'll need to see what we could, you know, what Eric Lopez can contribute because, you know, he may have to be a key player this season. Um, you, and we know there's talent there. So, um, yeah, it is to see where uh, it's going to come from for now. I mean, there are options. And now the schedule is going to lighten up a little bit. So, um, unfortunately, yeah. You know, hope, yeah. So, uh, hopefully, that's an extra time on the training pitch will yield some results as well. Yeah. And uh, so some notes here uh, about uh, the match. And also, I mean, it's, it's just all about Santiago Sosa, in my opinion, I think. Because uh, not only was his, it his first professional goal, uh, that's crazy in itself. Uh, because, I mean, how well he takes it, it's wow. I mean, mm. to think that's his right. first professional goal, it, there's, it almost feels like there's no way. Like, uh, that's uh, incredible, the, uh, the poise that he had in front of goal. Uh, but then also, yeah, 99% pass accuracy as well. I mean, on top of all the defensive work he was doing, he was everywhere on the pitch. I mean, he was a one-man show for us, and if we could clone him, we should. Uh, maybe slightly uh, pacier guy, too, if we, we were to clone him. Maybe inject some uh, Jurgen Dom's pace or something like that if uh, you're a scientist and you are a fan of Atlanta United. But... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, um, but either way, as a defensive midfielder, he's perfect. But uh, anyway, um, yeah, it's it's brutal, obviously, to uh, to go out in the same round every single year in the CCL uh, so far that we've been in it, uh, and looking like are, are we, are we going to be able to get in it next year? U.S. Open Cup uh, probably not going to happen, at least in the interim at the moment. Uh, will we be able to, you know... Uh, get in from the other spots that will remain to be seen but uh, a lot of work ahead of us that's for sure but uh one other moment that we haven't talked about quite yet was the jose martinez uh foot to his head which was uh is, was that in your opinion is that a red uh mm -hmm. Maybe I mean, he's going orange. towards it. Um, you know, uh, he's dipping his yeah, head a little he lower. Kind of his head a little bit. Right. There's exactly. no card. There's but definitely no... a booking. Yeah, it had to be at least a booking, but nothing whatsoever. And uh, that's uh, that's got to be a red for me. It, that's ridiculous. That's uh, you know, that's not even called for anything. When yeah, he goes down, and it's. I mean, do there need to be gash marks? Do there? I mean, like what else needs to be done there to? have a call it just doesn't make any sense so anyway it's uh you know a lot of the things uh were very conca caffy in this match uh including uh a lot of the diving a lot of the uh you know going down easily cramping and then having stretchers uh called to the pitch multiple times and then not used just like the first match and uh yeah hella annoying it's just one of those where um yeah, it's obvious what they're doing. I mean, there is no, there's no bones about it. Like, yeah, you're trying to waste time. I get it. But uh, yeah, into the that, into post match quotes that uh, yeah, Chip Curtin had some spicy things to say, and uh, Gabriel Haynes say he uh, apparently leveled an accusation that Union players were diving and faking things uh, in that little conversation that they had after the game ended. Uh, kind of heated discussion. But, uh, yeah, I saw that and I was really wanted to hear what they were saying. And I think it was pretty obvious that, yeah, they were talking about uh, some of those things. But uh, Curtin said pretty much that uh, I get that, but I don't think that's what we're about. I think we're about doing our talking on the field, which, I mean, come on. Like, it's, uh, I, I, I get there's like some bravado, you know, um, you know, because they had just beat us in two legs. But come on, it's really really obvious especially with his comments last match uh that 
it was arguably the you know the best match that they've ever you know or the biggest result that they've ever had and so you know it is one of those they went in there like very surprised i think to be able to uh you know get that big of a score line to be able to uh you know keep that score line so they did everything they could i mean it had to be that curtain was you know from the instruction from the beginning waste as much time as possible if you feel something go down but uh yeah not even the spiciest thing that he said obviously but that uh yeah jim curtain he said that on gabriel hainsay he said He's a great player and a great coach, but you can still be a sore loser and an asshole after a game. Woo! What are your thoughts on all of that, Mark? I uh, I respect it. I mean, I definitely don't expect somebody like Jim Curtin, uh, aka substitute teacher, to you know have this those spicy of a comment. But uh, it's great for the league. I mean, it's great from an entertainment standpoint. And uh, you know what? I don't mind him um, feeling himself a little bit, especially considering like he clearly respects Atlanta a lot. You know, like to call this like one of the biggest results, and the way he was talking up like Sosa, for example. You know, there's I think a little bit of uh, maybe uh, reverence for how you know Atlanta United came into the league. Um, you know some of uh the players and managers that they brought in um so i think you know he's like yeah he's he's like yeah we took down the big bad at lane united a, a little bit you know so um yeah and you know like managers are gonna um, protect their team i think that's pretty standard um it's like in the the coaching manual so oh uh, yeah I, I i like it over yeah Although he did uh, say some weird things about uh, Gabriel Hainsey as well, that yeah, you know, he's a foreign coach and that type of thing. Th it's like, I'm not sure what he's insinuating, but, um, you know, uh, there's an interesting point here, I think, made by ATL UTD prospects on Twitter that, uh, yeah, most of the foreign coaches that have come in, uh, you know, they're not missing the playoffs for five years and still being uh the coach of their team you know they missed mm -hmm. a couple years they're probably not coaching in the league anymore and uh yeah that's a that's a real really fair point here in which if he's trying to say mm -hmm. that you know maybe uh foreign coaches aren't giving enough respect to uh you know the kind of mls lifers like curtain and uh maybe others that's uh i mean kind of ridiculous i mean He's been at that post for a long while, and until Ernst Tanner pretty much came in, uh, Curtin, you know, he uh, he was pretty much, uh, some fans were trying to call for his head, trying to get him fired right. because he wasn't quite maybe doing the job. And so, you know, a lot a lot of things can change really quickly, and that's the, uh, the okay. really interesting part here. But uh, was it salty from Hainsey? You're, you're damn right it is, but it, uh, it also is, uh, Curtin is ridiculous in uh, saying that the players weren't faking injuries nor shit housing. I mean, yes, you know, not what you're about. Okay, yeah, all right, man. It's, uh, <laughs> but uh, I think this is a great fuel for the fire for Hainsey on June 20th in the league uh, when, you know, we'll uh, face them again and hopefully Hainsey uh, gets... His uh, his squad really uh, you know really ready for that, and we're ready to, ready to put it to them a little bit when we see them again. But anyway, let's wrap both of those match reviews up and get into the news. And uh, yeah, former head coach uh, of LA United, Tata Martino, uh, on returning to Mexico or returning to Atlanta with Mexico to play at the Benz. He said, quote, undoubtedly, Atlanta is a place that opened its doors to me, where they welcome me with a lot of affection. I feel like it's in my own city, always to come back and find myself at that marvelous stadium and the folks that work at the club with all the people that I shared two very nice years with, independently of the final outcome, which, of course, was very satisfactory. Uh, sounds very uh, translated and also very robotic, but uh, either way, nice words there. But uh, the truth is, it's always a pleasure to return, especially to a place where you feel so much connection to the fans. Atlanta is one of those places. So, 
Uh, yeah, Tata Martino pulling at the heartstrings there. And uh, yeah, you have any thoughts on Tata and uh, what he said here? Uh, yeah, you can just, uh, I think it's just another example of how that, you know, the relationship is real, the connection is real. Um, you know, the, even though he's only here for a couple of years, uh, it was obviously, it obviously had a big uh, impact on him and, you know, possibly his family. Um, and, you know, I, uh, I've actually planned on being at that game. So, uh, you know, uh, oh, yeah. to, to be there, obviously, you know, I'm not going to necessarily see Tata all that much, but, uh, to see his team, you know, you know, try to, uh, play out his ideals and principles. It'll be interesting to see that in person. So, and plus it should be party atmosphere. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, yeah, there's obviously a lot of Mexican fans in the United States as well. So it should be a good time. But uh, moving on from that into the transfer rumor of the week, uh, 2021 year old Mexican striker JJ Macias of Chivas was uh, reportedly offered to Atlanta United. That was according to BN Sports journalist Patrick Meehan Nader. And uh, the report said that Atlanta United were beginning to think about moving on Joseph Martinez. And they liked the idea of replacing him with Macias. And uh, it's about as ridiculous as a rumor as it could be. Uh, yeah, I think most people, when they heard it, was like, bullshit. But, uh, you know, why would Atlanta United move on Joseph Martinez? Uh, I get it maybe in the sense where, uh, you know, he's coming back from rehab. There is no idea of uh, how well he's going to return and if he's going to return to, uh, you know, his former powers. But... Uh, it is one of those things, too. I mean, yeah, the team just gave season ticket holders a little mini statue of Joseph Martinez. Why would they be this quickly pulling the plug on Joseph Martinez, right? It's uh, quite ridiculous. But, uh, yeah, what were your quick thoughts on uh, you know this rumor? Never believed it. it like, I just echo all the sentiments you said, basically. It, it doesn't make sense. Uh, it would definitely uh, ruin a lot of goodwill with the fans. So, uh, and like, it's way too soon to make that judgment on Joseph. You know what I mean? Uh, so it just, it just never made sense. Yeah, but it definitely made the rounds around uh, the interweb. So it definitely is uh, something worth, I think, talking about in that respect. But uh, Hercules Gomez of ESPN, he did uh, have an update the next day about it saying that LA United have zero interest in signing J.J. Macias, and uh, it was being pushed by an agent. And, uh, yeah, while it is an interesting and intriguing player, uh, I don't know about replacing Joseph Martinez, but maybe along with Joseph yeah. Martinez would make some sense uh, as a guy that, uh, you know, maybe, hopefully, who knows, uh, if uh, he played on the wing or something like that, or maybe in a two-striker setup. Uh, yeah, who says that, you know, having two DP uh strikers that would be you know a bad thing but um yeah replacing joseph martinez that's where uh that's where patrick meehan nader maybe uh went wrong with that rumor there but uh either way you know it's uh ridiculous but a 21 year old striker you know maybe somewhere in the territory of like what uh you know we should be looking to bring in a guy that uh you know maybe uh, wasn't getting the playing time as uh, he wanted at uh, Chivas, but, you know, still an intriguing guy that could have played a part. Uh, yeah, that, that is a guy that, uh, you know, the type of player we should go for, probably. But uh, moving on from that, uh, Alien United 2, they earned their first win of the season against OKC Energy. And uh, that was on Saturday, and Philip Goodrum scored the first goal of the year for them. Four players made the LA United 2 uh, their LA United 2 debuts, and goalkeeper Rocco Rios Novo picked up his first clean sheet of the season for the team. And uh, yeah, uh, Ronald Hernandez played a part, as well as Alex DeJohn and George Campbell, kind of uh, the understudies at uh, center back for us on the squad. And also, uh, Mateus Hosetsu also played 45 minutes. So you know, good to see that uh, some of the players that might feature a lot for the first team get some minutes. But uh, yeah, uh, moving on from that, uh, Tito Vishalba, uh, 
former player and also LGP. They, uh, there's something, uh, seen on Tito's, uh, IG story that maybe upset some fans. Uh, he was seen wearing a full Inter Miami kit sent to him by LGP. But, uh, did this bother you, Mark? No, I mean, what bothered me is seeing him in a Miami kit on the field, right? Yeah. Um... I don't, you know, if Tito were to come back to MLS, he better be coming back with Atlanta. Um, yeah. But or at least in know, the West. Is, yeah, <laughs> it, yeah, yeah, right. But no, I mean, like seriously, we could use him like literally right now. But uh, <laughs> which I understand, that's a yeah. Conversation right, there. right, right. <laughs> which I mean, I'll, I'll get into but, it. Basically, yeah, the, the shouts for him yeah. were loud last night when. Uh, Basically, we didn't have really much firepower coming off the bench, so it makes sense. Yeah, a yeah. guy who, you know, scored, uh, you know, double digits uh, and then also assisted double digits. It's uh, yeah, you know, someone that you would uh, like to see maybe be able to replicate it again in an Atlanta United shirt, possibly. But uh, the last two years of Tito Vishalba's, uh, you know, kind of uh, career here with LA United, maybe not, uh, you know, the best it definitely he was injured slash uh maybe not as effective maybe not favored it uh yeah it's kind of a bummer but uh you know it is what it is i think there but speaking of inter miami and uh getting into the match preview uh yeah you know may 9th at 1 p.m on sunday we'll be traveling to fort lauderdale to play them uh and it's uh you know, Inter Miami, it was their uh, inaugural season last year. They were an expansion side, and it was not uh, exactly what uh, David Beckham and its owners had in mind for sure. Uh, and it was definitely underwhelming, inconsistent for sure. 10th place in the Eastern Conference. Uh, yeah, 24 points total. Really, I think, left a lot to be desired for a lot of Miami fans, of course. Uh, maybe some were tempering their excitement, but uh, it is, I think, uh, what you expect when... Uh, yeah, I think, uh, basically, a lot of turnover, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of pieces that were uh, perplexingly I put together. Uh, said that <laughs> kind of word funny, but either way... Uh, yeah, they have essentially hired a new sporting director. They uh, got rid of Paul McDonough, who uh, pretty much promptly returned to us. Uh, their head coach also uh, was let go, and new head coach in Phil Neville was brought in this offseason. Definitely uh, Man U buddies with David Beckham with their time together there. And, um, yeah, it's, you know, it's interesting because uh, there's a lot of stuff... Uh, you know, in terms of kind of the turmoil, can they kind of uh, gain some consistency and, uh, you know, be the actual powerhouse that they want to be in this league? But, uh, you know, when you can't do like maybe it's not really simple, really, but a lot of other teams are able to really figure this uh, DP thing out fairly well. Uh, well, yeah, Blaze Matuidi, when he came uh, from Juventus, uh, yeah, he apparently was supposed to be a DP. And, uh, you know, now uh, because of uh, yeah, an MLS investigation, there are going to be possible sanctions, and then that uh, might be announced later this year. But, uh, yeah, you know, they violated some league budget rules, and the number of DPs that they uh, had to have, essentially, they... Uh, had to whittle that down, and Matias Pellegrini essentially had to be let go before the season. So uh, a little bit of a shit show going on there at Inter Miami. But uh, yeah, speaking of those uh, those acquisitions and losses and whatnot, uh, Mark, yeah, take it away on their key acquisitions from the off season. So uh, one of their main acquisitions was. Uh, uh, Grigori, he uh, comes in as a defensive midfielder to replace uh, Will Trapp. Um, so he slot, you figure he slots in next to the aforementioned Matuidi and Pizarro. 
Um, you know, typical ball winner, obviously younger, so you know, able to cover the field. You know, bring energy, um, bring balance and stability as well. Uh, kind of like Sosa, you know, in in, in that sense. Uh, then you have Ke Kevin Leardham. Uh, um, <clears throat> comes in is going to be he figures to be the new starting right back uh he joined him from seattle you know a lot of success with the sounders uh made it three MLS cups in four seasons with them and uh Kier, yeah, former boy former gunner um actually not you know he's only 31 which like kieran gibbs seemed like he was around ever so i'm actually surprised he's not older but uh yeah he uh he comes in um from uh, uh from west brom um and yeah in over 200 appearances for arsenal and west brom um so you know you figure for an mls team probably a, a pretty solid signing yeah and he's gonna come in in the uh middle of the season when uh of course the uh english sides uh they finish their season but uh yeah key losses aforementioned will trap uh, andres reyes a uh, guy that yeah, uh, yeah. New York Red Bulls, they swooped in, and then, uh, you know, they have him now. And also Ben Sweat, who has been traded to Austin FC. So, uh, you know, it's uh, definitely interesting, I think, uh, what's happening there. Uh, but maybe Breck Shea is going to be that, uh, that guy or, uh, you know, another player for them at left back until Gibbs does come in. But uh, let's get into what uh, Inter Miami kind of look like as a side. They are, uh, you know, at least on their right side, Lewis Morgan, definitely a player uh, for them on uh, last season's squad that was doing bits. He definitely tore us up on occasion when we were playing them. But uh, with Leardom and Morgan on one wing, it could be, uh, yeah, a very deadly uh, right side for them. And then with Gregore as the you know, uh, a defensive midfielder along with Matuidi, that should be fairly difficult to uh, get through, but uh, it's about consistency for them and uh, if they can put goals in the back of the net, I mean uh, yeah, if all their players are healthy I mean, they could, but uh, also, I mean, they're dealing with similar things as we are with a new coach and some new players uh, there will be uh, yeah, just some growing pains for sure, just like we will, but uh, in the last six matches, or uh, last four rather, uh, w between us and them, they, yeah, all last year, they beat us twice. We drew with them twice. They had five goals. We had three goals. Uh, it was pretty much like an anemic fest, uh, pretty much between us and them a lot last year, where battle of futility, pretty much. And uh, not a lot of fun generally watching those matches, but. Um, you know, hopefully they become a little bit more fun this year. But uh, in Miami's previous matches, they uh, drew nil-nil to uh, Nashville at Nissan Stadium. There was uh, kind of a hotly debated referee decision midway through the second half there against them. But they are also without the uh, Iguains in that match. Uh, they were away for personal reasons. And then they beat uh, Philadelphia Union that uh, previous match before that. 2-1. Uh, the Union maybe were a little bit distracted, but, uh, you know, possibly to uh, face us. So it makes sense that uh, maybe it was not uh, the, the, uh, the, the best match from the Union there. I mean, if you go by the, the uh, thinking of, okay, well, you beat this team, and then if uh, uh, they beat you, that, that means they're uh, much better than you are. No, no, no. That's... Uh, <laughs> That's not exactly the case here. I think we have a much better chance to beat uh, Inter Miami than the Union. But uh, yeah, um, going into the you know type of team that they are, they're uh, you know they're probably going to concede a lot of the possession to us. They're going to be a team that plays with that width, with uh, Morgan, with um, you know the guys on their wings. And then probably be a little bit more direct. So, you know, it'll be something that we will have to watch out for with, uh, you know, some big guys in their defense, uh, you know, as 
Uh, an old friend in uh, LGP and Ryan Shawcross as well. Those guys will be looking to win a lot of balls in the box for sure. Uh, so, you know, into some of those players to watch then. Uh, Gonzalo Higuain, you know, their, uh, their goal scorer that they're, they will be relying on and uh, definitely a big name around the world of, uh, you know, Real Madrid, Juve, and Chelsea fame. Definitely a guy that's, uh, you know, name alone does strike fear. Is he doing enough in MLS? Mm, arguable. But, uh, yeah, also another guy, Rodolfo Pizarro. Uh, yeah, he's probably their talisman. He's the guy that uh, kind of makes their attack run. Uh, and kind of as he goes, they usually go. Uh, he had four goals and five assists last season in his debut MLS campaign. But, uh, yeah, also uh, Robbie Robinson, an another guy that uh, will be uh, kind of uh, not only kind of uh, – you know, building on his rookie campaign, but a guy that will be uh, kind of the understudy for Iguain as well at the striker position on a normal basis. Uh, for Atlanta, Mark, get into it. Yeah, so uh, you figure, of course, yeah, if you're talking about Atlanta's most important players, especially this season, uh, Santiago Sosa has to be at the top of the list. Uh, you know, we've, we've said a lot about him in this episode alone and he's, he's played every minute in every competition for that reason uh joseph you know you know he's working his way back i think uh you know we're you go into each match hoping that uh maybe this is the one where he uh he scores that first goal but uh you know each match i think it's going to be bit by bit improvements and his play will always be important for Atlanta united and i would uh say marcelin moreno as well um uh, you know he had the moment against new england um, you know, as I said before, I'd like to see more of that from him. He uh, he actually said in an interview recently that he, uh, the left inside winger, is a for a position of his. So you know, but wherever he can uh, set, uh, be play would go along to United getting results. Yeah. So uh, let's get into the injury and availabilities uh, for both squads. Uh, Miami are reeling just like we are, essentially. And uh, both Iguain, Gonzalo, and Federico, uh, they pretty much had to go back uh, to Argentina. They uh, missed this following match following the death of their mother. Uh, and so definitely uh, our thoughts go out to the Iguain family for sure. Uh, and moving on from them, Pissarro also uh, might be questionable as well, as well as Robbie Robinson, as well as Julian Carranza. So pretty much most of their attack is uh, out for this uh, this match. And uh, it'll be very interesting to see who they field. But for us, we uh, also are missing Barco. We are missing Dom, both with hamstring injuries. Machope Chol with a lower body. And then Mo Adams is still out with a hernia surgery. And then... Uh, Alec can with his shoulder. And then Mateus is set to play with the twos, but uh, is he going to be taking part with uh, Gabriel Hainsey's squad? Uh, I don't think Hainsey has seen much of Hosetu really at all. So uh, probably not for a while. And then Alicia Lopez for his personal reasons as well with his family. But uh, getting into the opponents, uh, starting 11 and who they could play, uh, at least last match they played McCarthy. Uh, between the sticks, Jones, LGP, Shawcross, and Leardom uh, from left to right in defense. Matuidi and Grigore in uh, the defensive midfielder uh, positions. And Chapman, Ujoa, and Morgan as the attacking midfielders. And Pissarro played as the striker. And so uh, if you don't have Pissarro uh, and you don't have Robinson, it'll be, yeah, it'll be so interesting. I think you have to bring in an academy guy. Uh, who knows? Who knows? I mean, this uh, will really, I think, uh, kind of uh, be asked questions of both squads, really. Who's going to score the goals? So let's uh, get into our predicted score, our starting 11 then. Uh, between the lines or uh, through the lines together, Goos, of course, between the sticks. Uh, I mean, some people might argue for Rocco Rios Novo, but, uh, you know, we have to do some roster stuff to get that to happen. Uh, but what does your back line look like? So from right to left, I have Anton Walks, Miles Robinson, Alan Franco, and George 
Hello. Uh, I think that uh, Brooks Sunday gets a rest here, and you know, Anton Walk pretty effective utility player. You know, I know Ronald Hernandez is our right back, uh, but you know, he played 45 minutes versus the twos. You know, will he be mastered enough to start? I don't think so. So, um, yeah, the, that's uh, that's the thinking behind this predicted backline. Yeah, uh, for me, it's pretty much the same, uh, except for Ronald Hernandez does come in for me. Uh, I, I think, yeah, well, Brooks Lennon did, he did have uh, that rest uh, recently because of that, uh, you know, that uh, face injury with that shiner. And uh, yeah, so he might not necessarily need rest, but I'm not sure that uh, I have him in the back line. I might have him later on. But uh, yeah, I think, you know, Robinson and Franco, they need to build that chemistry. And then uh, even though last match or last, you know, the last podcast, we talked about how, um, you know, the chemistry isn't quite there. <sighs> That's the thing. You know, you probably would have loved to see it not be kind of tested in a CCL match. But in these type of matches, I think this is where you kind of, uh, you know, try to build and start that from somewhere and uh, hopefully they can start uh, building that rapport together in that center back pairing. But uh, let's get into that midfield. Yeah. So midfield three again. Sosa, of course, retains his position. You know, he pretty much can't not start right now. Yeah. Um, alongside him, I have Ibarra and Hyman. I think you have a nice balance of box to box and then the type of midfielder that's going to get into the box. Um, you know, Hyman's one of the players I'm looking to, I think, to make uh, goal contributions. Um, so, yeah, I think that, uh, that's my midfield. Yeah, uh, pretty much the same for me, except for Moreno for Hyman there. Uh, I think Moreno can build on that uh, penalty goal that he scored last match. And so, uh, you know, he being a former DP, I would think that, yeah, he's... A guy that's, uh, you know, maybe more of a bang-on starter there. Abara, uh, I think, you know, in for me here because we need to be able to at least stop a little bit of their attack there uh, between the both of them. But I wouldn't be surprised to see maybe Heinemann and Moreno actually start uh, to be a little bit more attacking to get, you know, some more uh, possible goals into this lineup. But, uh, yeah, getting into that forward line, who do you have, Mark? So I have uh, Moreni, Joseph, and Eric Lopez. I think uh, Eric Lopez is one of, another player that we probably need to get going. Um, you know, see what we have. He could be, I think, a contributor possible in the attack. Uh, so I think he uh, will line up on the left, you know, giving him the ability to cut in on his right. I think Moreni retains his position on the right. You know, he'll have the ability to cut in on his left. And, uh, yeah, Joseph, you know, like Joseph obviously is building his fit in the back up, so... Uh, if he does start and you kind of figure he will, will um, we can see, you know, we'll see how long he can go. Probably not the full 90 again, but uh, it's all about, you know, getting him back to his best. So. Right. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, every three or four days we have a match. And so, you know, Jose Martinez, uh, yeah, starting has to probably here. I mean, we'll get a little bit tiny bit of a better break i think after this and so uh, i could see him coming off around the 65th minute 70th minute um yeah that could uh because he did come off you know in the, the match against the philly uh union so it definitely is uh possible that he could start here uh for me yeah also eric lopez does start on the left but for me brooks lennon i think gets that uh nod at right wing i think uh you know he's been uh, you know, putting in some good balls, but uh, also I think, yeah, he could uh, maybe vary up his kind of, um, you know, type of service as well. And maybe we could find Joseph in some more dangerous positions uh, in the box. Uh, he, you know, Joseph does love uh, the kind of uh, lower balls, uh, the near post ones, the uh, early ball over the top. I mean, I think Lennon is fully capable of delivering those. So it's just a matter of building that type of chemistry between those two players as well. So I hope that uh, maybe Lennon, in place of that, uh, in place of maybe Mulraney, who has been playing a bunch and, uh, you know, I think could use a rest here. I think uh, definitely could be the guy that gets the nod here. But uh, 
Yeah, speaking of all those uh, varying balls, hopefully, uh, you know, the type of service is different and we can be more clinical ergo because of that. Uh, but that has been such a big issue, of course, uh, for the, the team this year is scoring those balls or scoring those goals in the run of play. But uh, yeah, what, what else would you like to see the team do? Uh, just more directness, uh, like uh, like we saw with Moreno versus New England, you know. And I think that in general, that is definitely one thing that we're missing. Uh, you know, players that just uh, take risks, you know, try to put defense on the on the back foot. Um, I think that is definitely one way we could definitely uh, create more chances and create better chances. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's get to the odds according to Bet365. Atlanta United have a 25% chance to win this match. To draw, it's 27.8%. And Miami have a whopping 54.1% chance to win this match. Uh, that probably goes in line with the kind of the record that we have against them. So it's not maybe a huge surprise. But uh, with all that being said, let's get into the score prediction then. What do you got, Mark? Yeah, I don't see scoring in this game. Uh, you know, both teams figure to miss uh, are figured to be missing several attackers. And both teams do have a strong defense. Um, you know, we saw a bit of that last season, very cagey type games. And so I do think this will be a 1-1. Um, you know, I would... I If the Iguains and Pizarro don't play, I don't see how they score. You know, uh, but... It, they may find a way. So, uh, yeah, I'm hoping obviously the attack, our attack is a little bit better than this, but the, on current form, I think it's going to be a 1 1. Yeah. Uh, I have to pretty much go with a 1 1 as well. Uh, I also don't know where these goals are going to come from, as, uh, yeah, you know, but I think uh, we might score one from the run of play. They probably might score one maybe from uh, a header or something from a set piece or something. And that, uh, that's the thing. It's, uh, you know, I'd prefer this over a scoreless draw, of course. And I, of course, would prefer a win. But right now, yeah, we just, we need to, we need to have some time to train as a collective. We need to have some time to uh, really get our bearings. And, uh, you know, this match, maybe just quite, not, quite isn't it. So, anyway, guys, let us know what you guys think could happen in the comments below your score predictions who might score all that good stuff but uh we'll wrap it up for the match preview and get into our question of the day and our question of the day is how concerned are you with the lack of cutting edge in the final third let us know in the comments below but guys that is it for us today remember to like share comment subscribe for mark i'm aj thank you so much for watching